after the Eiffel Tower, what's one of the most iconic things about the city of Paris? The food, of course. French cuisine and the flavors of Paris have been celebrated and revered for centuries. And when a new courtyard opens up in the middle of the city, amazing restaurants are quick to follow. This is Dinner in Paris, which was designed by La Toile Associé and published by Funny Fox, who helped sponsor this video. Hi everybody, my name is Nick Murphy of the Brothers Murph, and we are here with BoardGameGeek.com. Well, we've got a brand new courtyard that just needs a terrace, so let's get this game down to the table and learn how to play Dinner in Paris. In Dinner in Paris, players will try to be the best new restaurant owner in Paris by opening restaurants and setting up terraces in the newly made courtyard in the city. There are different kinds of restaurants that can be opened and each restaurant will have its own terrace. Players will be jockeying for position in the courtyard to try and complete objectives and gain various majorities. But before we get into all that, we should learn how to set up the game. First, place the main board in the center of the table. If playing with two players, you may flip the board to the two-player side, though you may play with two players on the three to four player side instead if you wish. The game will be the same either way. Next, shuffle the resource cards, deal four to each player, and then place the deck in its designated space on the board and turn over the top four cards. The pigeon cards should be shuffled and placed on their space and then draw one random majority card and place it on its space near the pigeon cards. Give each player two objective cards. The players will choose one to keep and the other will go face up next to the objective card deck here. Place the restaurants next to the board so they're visible to all players. Each player will receive a player board. Place the translucent yellow cube on the $1 space on the income track and the clear cube nearby. Place the 52 terrace tiles in the empty spaces on the player board until they are all full. There will be some left over. These are just extras in case you lose some so they can be returned to the box. Lastly, place the various restaurant property tiles next to your game board, and now we're ready to begin. The player who last ate at a restaurant will go first, and then play will continue clockwise. On their turn, the player will take three actions. For the first action, the player must draw a resource card. They may draw a card from the face-up cards or draw blind off the top of the deck. Note that when a card is drawn from the face-up row, it is immediately replaced. Resource cards will have ingredients or money on them. Ingredients are used to open restaurants and money is used to build terraces. At the end of their turn, if the player has more than seven resource cards in hand, they will have to discard down to seven. And if the resource card row ever has three similar ingredients, all of the cards will be discarded and four more will be drawn. After the player has done the mandatory draw a resource card as their first action, they may take two more actions. They may choose the same action twice or two different actions with the exception of the build a terrace action which may only be done once per turn. The first action that may be performed is draw a resource card which means players can draw three resource cards on their turn if they use all of their actions to do so. But let's get into the good stuff, opening restaurants, building terraces and completing objectives. To open a restaurant, the player must turn in ingredients. There are eight different kinds of restaurants in the game and they all require different ingredients to be built. There are also limited numbers of each eatery that can be built in the game. There are five friteries, there are only two pizzerias, fruits de mer, creperies, grills, barava, and brasseries, and only one gastronomique. Each restaurant is shown on the player board and will denote which ingredients they require to be open. For example, a fritri requires only two potatoes, whereas a grill requires potatoes, tomatoes, cheese, and meat. Players will turn in the necessary ingredient cards and then place one of that restaurant along the edge of the courtyard depending on player count. If playing a four-player game, all restaurants must be placed along the outermost edge and nowhere else. In a three-player game, they are placed one row inwards, and in a two-player game, they are placed two rows in. Or you can just use the other side of the board if playing with two players. Restaurants must be placed along this outer edge, but may be placed anywhere in this row, off on its own, or near other restaurants. Players will place a matching property tile in their color onto the restaurant to show that they own it. And lastly, if the restaurant gains them income, they will move their yellow cube up the amount of income given. Well, since we just got some income, we might as well use it. Income is used to build terraces. Though remember that this action may only be used once on a turn, as your income is not replenished after you finish each action. No money, no terraces. 
When a player takes this action, they may build as many terraces that their income will allow. To build a terrace, the player chooses a restaurant they want to build a terrace for. The restaurants are broken into groups by size. The friteries are in their own group. The pizzerias, creperies, and fruits de mer are in another. The barava and grills are a third, and the brasseries and the gastronomiques are a fourth. Once a restaurant is chosen, the player will pay the required amount for each terrace tile. The amounts are shown above the terraces and will become more expensive the more terraces of that type that you build. And the bigger the restaurant, the more expensive the terraces are in general. The players may buy as many terraces as their income allows, the terraces always being taken from the left. Though a player can turn in coin cards to gain more money to spend, though note that this is virtual money and does not increase your permanent income. For example, if the player has six income, they could build two terraces from group two and two from group one. Note that your income never goes down and will be available again on your next turn. To track how much of your income you've spent as you're buying terraces, you may use the clear cube provided. Once a terrace is bought, it may be placed in the courtyard. The terrace must be placed in front of a restaurant the player owns and must match the category the terrace came from. So a player may not buy a terrace from the free 3 category and place it in front of a gastronomique. As the player purchases terraces, additional income may be gained. If this happens, they move their yellow cube up one on the income track, though this new income is not available until the next turn. Okay, so I've bought my terraces. What are the rules for placing them? The first terrace bought for a restaurant must be placed directly in front of the restaurant, and then all other terraces for that restaurant must be placed orthogonally adjacent to a previously placed terrace. A terrace may never be placed in the restaurant row or on top of a decor element like a band or a flower bed. And the terraces of two restaurants may never be placed orthogonally adjacent to each other, whether they are terraces for an opponent's restaurant or another restaurant of your own. For example, this is a legal placement of terraces, while this here is not legal. Though, a player may build terraces in front of another player's restaurant as long as they are not adjacent to any of that restaurant's terraces. If a terrace is placed on top of a pigeon, the player will draw a pigeon card, but we'll talk about what those do in a moment. The last action a player may do is complete an objective. Players may complete the personal objective kept at the beginning of the game, or they may complete one of the public objectives in the face-up row. If a personal objective is completed, it will be placed face up in front of the player, and then they will draw another objective off the top of the deck and choose to keep it as a personal objective or to put it with the public objectives. Note that any personal objectives that you do not complete by the end of the game will lose you points. When a player completes a public objective, they will take that card and place it in front of them, and it is now unavailable for all other players. Though when a public objective is taken, a new objective is not drawn. The objectives may ask for terraces to be in specific areas, like around the band, or in certain areas of the board, or they may ask for terraces to be in a certain shape. Though note that this shape may be found in a bigger group of terraces. For example, the red player may complete this objective because they can find the shape in this group of terraces here. So those are the four actions that you're able to take on your turn. Let's quickly explain the pigeon cards, and then we'll get into endgame scoring. If a player places a terrace on a pigeon, they will immediately gain a pigeon card. If the card has a lightning bolt at the bottom of it, it is played immediately. The immediate cards may allow a player to draw resource cards or place another terrace. If the card has an hourglass, the player may hold onto it and play it at a later date. The two coin card may be used to buy more terraces. Some cards allow the player to draw or complete another objective. Some allow the player to open a restaurant with one less ingredient. And lastly, one allows the player to break the adjacency rule. If this card is played, the player may place the terraces of one of their restaurants orthogonally adjacent to an opponent's terrace, and two terraces of the opponent's may be covered by their own. Though you may not completely sever the link between the opponent's terrace and their restaurant. And note that this card may only be used on opponents and not any of your own restaurant's terraces. And that wraps up the gameplay. Play will continue round and round until one of three end game conditions are met. The game will end if a certain amount of restaurants have been built depending on the player count, if a player placed all of their terraces from two categories, or if it is not possible to legally place any more restaurants or terraces on the board. Once the endgame is triggered, that round will finish so all players have had equal turns, and then scoring will commence. Each player will score points for each building they own. Each restaurant's victory points are shown next to their name on the player board. 
players will score the amount of victory points shown on the last revealed terrace space in each category on their player board. Players will gain or lose points for objectives. And lastly, majorities will score. At the beginning of the game, a majority card was placed on the board. This denoted which majorities were scoring for this game. Each category on the card will score separately. Majorities could include the most terraces around certain features, most money, most restaurants, most pigeon cards, and most terraces in certain halves of the board denoted by street names. Rue Sud would be this half, Rue Nord, Rue Est, and Rue West. The majorities will score points based on the player count. If there's a tie, the players will share the points from the tied position and the one below it. And at the end of scoring, the player with the most points will win. In the case of a tie, the player who built the most terraces will win. Dinner in Paris is all about jockeying for position in the courtyard and trying to gain those majorities. But there are a lot of tough decisions. Do you build a lot of free trees knowing their terraces are cheap but they're not worth a lot of points? Or do you build a massive gastronomique and be the fanciest place in town? And if Dinner in Paris seems like a game you might enjoy, make sure to check out its page on BoardGameGeek.com and join in the discussion. And until next time, I've been Nick Murphy. We're here with Board Game Geek, and that is how you play Dinner in Paris. Have a great day.